Good afternoon. Uh, today is Tuesday, February 19th, 2019. This is the regular monthly meeting of the Citizens Finance Advisory Committee. I'd like to welcome everybody, including the audience and our guests. Thank you for coming. And we will begin, we have a, a quorum present, six of seven members present, Bart Beckman currently absent. Um, and we will begin with calling this meeting to order and a moment of silence, please. Okay, let's rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, all right, any committee member announcements? Or any staff announcements before we begin our meeting? Um, just as a, another reminder, we have our community goal setting on March 1st here at the Vets Hall starting at 4 o'clock. Um, so anybody interested on the committee or in the community that would like to come and participate, we encourage you to do so. You can also um, go to our city's web page and um, sign up through there for our poll close survey um, tool, which is um, receiving community input, input, input on goals and objectives. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. That's community goals, March 1st, Friday, 4 p.m. here at the Vets Hall. Thank you. Uh, all right, I'll open it up for public comment. If there's any member of the public that would like to comment on anything not on the agenda or something for which you cannot stay, please come forward, state your name, which is optional. Welcome. Good afternoon, CFAC. My name is Rigmore. I'm a resident here in Morro Bay, and I'm glad you don't spend my money on heat. Any <laughs> anyway... I wanted to come down here to thank you all for being on this very important and informative committee. I do not know Barbara Spagnola, except a few times on TV, but I was so happy that she was re-elected. I had intended to go up to the community center the day the election was going on to tell the council that if they did not re-elect Mrs. Spagnola, something was wrong with their brains. Luckily, their brains worked. I must also add my big gratitude to the young girl over there, which I, oh, there I see her name, the girl with the, girl with the great legs. She's just amazing. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Rigmore, for the compliments. And uh, Jennifer <laughs> Calway is our finance director, and we are all very pleased with her. Uh, s s but thank you for those comments. Um, yes. Yes, sir. Please come forward. Well, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Davis. I want to welcome the new members, and I want to say thank you to all of you who serve on this committee. Um, the work that you do here is important, and I want to assure you that the City Council takes your recommendations very seriously. So thank you for serving. Thank you, Mr. Davis. And I'd also, please come forward, madam. Thank you. I guess I better take this opportunity as well. Uh, Marlis McPherson, uh, also a city council member, and very proud to say that I'm your new liaison to the CFAC. Um, and I do have to add that I did ask for this assignment, and I'm really looking forward to it because I served on this committee, and I know how important it is. So thank, welcome to everybody, especially the new members. Uh, thank you, Marlis, as well. And I think we'll be hearing from Marlis a little bit later on the agenda on one, one of the items. But thank you both council members for your support as well. And we will do our best to uh, uh, give you good, solid, well thought out, researched recommendations. That's what we think is our job from a citizen's perspective. So thank you. All right, moving right along, I will go on to the consent calendar, A1, and that is approval of the minutes for the December 18th, 2018, regular citizens oversight CFAC. Uh, I reviewed them. Has everybody had a chance to review them? And does anybody have any comments or updates, or can we just... 
then I'll entertain a motion. Okay. I'll second. Uh, so that was Bill Blast that made the motion to approve the minutes from the December 18th meeting and John Martin who seconded those. Uh, okay. So uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. All right, so that brings us to item B2, election of chairperson and vice chairperson. Um, and, and if you're wondering about that, I no longer, uh, since my term was up uh, in uh, January and I was a previous chairperson, obviously that doesn't carry forward. So, and I believe our vice chairperson's term may have been up as well. That was uh, that John Martin. So, so I will entertain some motions from the floor. Well, I think we should start with the uh, chairperson. Um, Madam Chair, before you... Um become not Madam Chair, potentially. Would you like to do new member introductions? We skipped over B1. Would you like me to do what? B1, sorry? item B1. Oh, I'm so sorry, thank you. Okay. Trying to move along so we get to the meat of the... <laughs> item B1, new member introductions. And then I, I, I will ask each of you, I'll start with Lois, give just a, a little introduction of yourself for anybody in the audience or watching at home. My apologies. My name is Lois Johnson, new to the committee. I've been in Morro Bay uh, full-time since uh, about 2016. Currently the Chief Financial Officer at Twin Cities Community Hospital in Templeton. Thank you, Lois. Bill? Yeah, Bill Rose. Oh, hang on, you want to touch that, the little button. Oh, I see. Uh, Bill Bowes, I'm a resident of Morro Bay. I've been a resident since 2003. Uh, retired Navy. Uh, Ran some businesses uh, in the aerospace industry, uh, been on several boards, and still do some consulting uh, for some aerospace companies. And Mr. Alexander, Homer? Homer Alexander. I've lived in Morro Bay for 19 years. Um, I'm retired. Um, previously, um, I was on this committee from its inception through 2015. Thank you, Homer. So you can see we have a wealth of expertise here. And I, uh, again, welcome the new members and thank you for applying, going through the application process and your willingness to apply your expertise and, and help our committee. Um, and then just real quickly, John, would you introduce yourself for uh, briefly? John Martin. I've been on the committee for, I guess, about two years now. Retired about two and a half years ago and relocated to Morro Bay uh, full time. And decided I didn't want to sit around, I wanted to get involved, and so applied for this committee, and it's, uh, it's been a real pleasure. And your background, you, little, you oh, were yeah. working? I, I retired, uh, I was the general manager of a water district in Tehachapi, and uh, served uh, at another community service district for many years before that. I have about 23 years of public service management. Very good. And John and Homer also served with me on the Blue Ribbon Commission in June of 2018 on the water reclamation facility rate setting process. So that's why we're familiar with some of those recommendations. And Dave Baton? David Baton, uh, been a resident of Morro Bay for a little over five years, been a member of this committee for approximately two years. Uh, retired uh, government worker, uh, worked for the city of Santa Rosa for 26 years. Uh, last position was in the purchasing office. Thank you, Dave. And myself, Barbara Spagnola, I've been in Morro Bay uh, about uh, almost 10 years now. Uh, originally served on the Citizens Oversight Committee with uh, Homer uh, back in 2009 going forward and also, also uh, retired a little over a year ago, spent uh, many years in uh, with Northrop Grumman, Senior Manager, Asset Management, and then with uh, Computer Sciences Corporation as a technology advisor and uh, uh, management as well. So happy to be here serving again, and I think all of us are, so we have almost all ex, um, areas of expertise represented, I believe. So, all right, now we go to B2. Thank you, Jen. And uh, I will take any nominations, and you can feel free to nominate yourself. I'd like to nominate Barbara Spagnola for chairperson. <laughs> oh, thank you, John. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> thank you. 
Are there any other nominations before we get into discussion? Yes, I'd like to uh, nominate John Martin as vice chair. I'll second. Second. Anything else? Vice chair, chairman? Uh, okay, so first question, John, would you accept that nomination for vice chair? Yes. Thank you, John. Um, I would accept it for with a proviso that it's a one-year term. I have been serving for a long time, and I also serve as vice chair on the WERF CAC, and, and I believe it's uh, uh, good, responsible management to, to get other people involved, and since we have so many new members right now, I can't ask you day one, but uh, maybe in the future, sooner than later, you'll be ready, and we, we can address that at that time. So with the proviso, my term would be till next year as chairman, then I would accept that. Any further discussion? All right, ready to take a motion on myself as chairman and uh, John Martin as, or excuse me, ready to take a vote on both motions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed to either one of those motions? Okay, both carry 6-0 in the interest of time. Is that satisfactory, staff? Okay, um, got that? Yeah, we should do them as separate votes because they're two different motions. Oh, okay, okay. So on the first motion, uh, Chairman, myself, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, on the second motion, John Martin is vice chair, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Both motions carry 6 0. Thank you. Thanks. All right. That brings us to item B3, which is a brief finance uh, department update from our financial director, uh, Jennifer Calloway. Go ahead, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be super brief because you do have a full agenda um, before you. You have a copy, the hard copies of the CAFR, which you had asked for back in December, um, as well as the management letter and the um, report on internal controls that did get submitted to GFOA. Um, by December 31st, we have not heard back from them yet. Mr. Poon was here at our last council meeting to present the audit finding. Um, the council as a whole thank the committee for your review and your input in the draft report. We did acknowledge that you didn't get to see the final report um, before the um, presentation to the council due to the cancellation of the January meeting. But again, they thanked everybody for um, your input and your review and appreciated the committee's um, efforts on that. Also, I wanted to point out that I handed out a third quarter uh, sales tax update. That's part of the packet that um, you have at your seats for you, before you. Those are the reports that we get from our sales tax consultant. And um, seem, there's a lot of questions on sales tax that um, we're receiving. I thought that might be useful for um, the committee members and maybe especially for the new committee members. So I'll try to include those each quarter as we get them for, for your review. Um, and then I think Jennifer, that's it. I just say, I comment on that, that this is a calendar year Q3. So that's I'm correct. Just, yeah. That's, that's it. That's all I have for today. That was brief. Thank you. Um, Yes, I think these, I've seen these before, and these are very useful, and it also helps us when we're trying to project things with sales tax and revenue increases, et cetera. Not to mention we're, the city is paying these consultants because they need this information, so why not share it with as many citizens as possible? But you can see things are trending fairly well. So, um, And in fact, if you p compare the one quarter <laughs> fiscal year to date, uh, 432 to 565,000, to me that's significant. Now I know last year they had some issues with the road closure, Highway 1, but, but it looks like we're doing real well there and Measure Q. So any other comments or questions on that or what Jennifer presented? Well, one comment I have, I, I noticed that there's a new used car, or not a new, newly started used car dealership in Morro Bay. Uh, on Main Street. So I'm hopeful that that's going to generate some sales tax revenue from used car sales. I believe that used cars are subject to sales tax. They are. I have, have and, not seen the new dealership, but I'm always excited about a uh, car dealership in town. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're in the location that used to be uh, Morro Bay RV. Okay. And uh, yeah, they've, they've started up in that location. So I see they have a lot of used cars for sale out there. I hope, I'm hoping that's going to bump up the uh, the category for autos and transportation. Want to ask her? 
Uh, Jennifer, why are some of the sales tax categories confidential? If there's not enough um, businesses within the category that you would be able to identify the report. Um, so, for example, if we had one restaurant in town, we wouldn't report on restaurants because you would know which restaurant that is and what their earnings are. Oh, so, so you if you to, had a single group, then there has it's to be not, enough yeah. in there that the numbers reported out, you would not be able to back into okay. who's reporting. It's that's confidential. At state law, mm -hmm. okay. Correct. We buy. Um, we have a, a resolution even for staff internally, and there's only a few of us allowed to, or an agreement mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. HDL to receive the information. To balance your books, yeah, gotcha. Okay, I didn't know that. Thank you. Thanks, John. Good question. Alrighty. All right, that brings us to item B4. Uh, B4 is the review of the fiscal year 2018-19 uh, second quarter budget performance report, which is actually for the six months of the fiscal year. And um, that information is in our agenda packet. This is item B4. Uh, recommendation, receive that and uh, provide input. So to do that, um, First of all, you received, did you want to make any preliminary comments, Jennifer, on that? I'll do just a quick um, overview. I, we did receive a number of questions and we responded to those um, this afternoon. So hopefully the committee had a chance to see those responses. You have hard copies of the responses and all the attachments that we sent out um, in front of you in your packets. Um, you know, a general statement is that revenues are trending well. Um, there's, if you remember from the first quarter, the state sales tax reporting um, system had changed for reporting and there's um, been some corrections and true ups to that. So overall, we're, we're doing well, trending well. We do have some significant um, revenue adjustments for the general fund. Uh, I would just caution that the majority of those are from our mutual aid support for fire, um, which has direct offsetting costs. And then um, our cannabis application fees that also have direct offsetting costs. And to the extent that we don't spend the money on application reviews, um, it's refunded to the applicant. So um, those are not windfalls, if you will, for the general fund. They'll be offset by expenditures. Also, um, we do have some uh, budget expenditure adjustments, again, mostly for um, the measure Q or the um, mutual aid costs for overtime and fire support to go out to mutual aid. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything. Um, and it didn't strike me from any of the questions that we received that there were significant concerns about the general fund um, expenditure adjustments. We do have some um, minor adjustments for the Polco survey tool that we purchased for $4,000. Um, there's a $2,000 adjust adjustment for a point in time homeless survey that'll be conducted through the county. Um, and then uh, $18,000 to augment some of the expenditures in the fire department for equipment related to use um, while they were on the, on the support team. This is the first year that we are recommending that we take the uh, mutual aid money that we receive um, that was um, allocated towards use of our equipment for our trucks and we put that in our vehicle replacement fund so we can start accruing that. Do you remember last year we had to use that in the general fund to help balance? So, because um, we were anticipating lower revenues. Um, but we're not doing that this year. We are going to put that in our equipment replacement fund and it'll be designated for the fire department. So the next time they need a vehicle, it'll be available for them to um, purchase towards their vehicle. Um, Measure Q is also trending very well. We have a, a $22,000 adjustment for revenues based on the estimates from um, HDL that they just provided us. And then we have um, some expenditure adjustments as well. Those are to support um, an SRO position. A little bit about that, the contract is still um, in negotiations, if you will, the chief will be leaving this meeting and heading to the school board to have a conversation with them. It will be presented to the council for consideration, likely the first meeting in March. Um, so when we present that to the council, we would like to be able to give them a full picture of the school district's costs and then what it would cost the city. Um, so we've asked that Measure Q support the expenditures, the one-time expenditures for the vehicle purchase, 
um, uniforms, laptop, a uniform with the safety equipment and a laptop. Um, of course, a vehicle on a laptop will be repurchased again in five or so years, but we'll accrue through our um, replacement schedules for those. So that's why we're calling them one time. Um, as proposed right now, um, we're anticipating the school district to fully fund the position. Um, that's what we're expecting to be able to bring back to the council, but until we reach final negotiations, um, can't say that for sure. And if the council does not approve the agreement or we aren't able to reach agreement with the school district, this money wouldn't be spent. Um, it would sit there as, as unappropriate or appropriated funds, but there wouldn't be a purpose for them if we don't have an SRO. Um, so there were several questions that came in about that. The chief is here, as well as our support services manager, so he can answer and field any questions you have about that. Our fire chief is here as well, so he can answer any questions you have about any of the fire expenditures. And if we want to do that first, I think that would be best. Our public works director um, provided a memo that was sent out about capital projects that will be um, added for mid-year adjustments when we present to the council. He got held up at a Caltrans meeting, so he's on his way, um, and he should be here by the time we're done with any discussion on the other funds. Okay, thank you. So typically what we do is we go through this in order of your summary on the agenda so that we're not all jumping around with our various questions. And I'd still like to do that, but in, you know, out of... Uh, respect for the chief's time that has another meeting at the school, maybe we should jump to the SRO issue, which that's on page 25 of your, 25 of your report, 33 of the staff. That's where. Um, so if, if you look at the page 33 of 58, the very small footnote on your agenda packet, that's where we just start the discussion on most of the discussion on Measure Q, and um, that's where on, actually it's the next page, 34, where we talk about the SRO. And then there were some questions also submitted on the SRO. That's in this handout that Jennifer passed out to all of us, the questions that came in on once the agenda was released from our members. And that is on page... I just want to make sure everybody has had a chance to at least look at that or can follow along. Uh, was that page two, maybe, of the... It's um, the email that is, it's the thicker of the two packets. It's time stamped as 10.49 a.m. I don't have it in mind, but I have it. I printed it out ahead of time, so. Uh. Okay, so um, do we want to have the chief present the, uh, what he wants to say about this, and then we'll have our discussion? Are there any specific questions that you would like answered by the chief? Or I'm sure he can give you more detail if you'd like, but if there's anything specific... From the position for the position or concerns about any um, funding from Measure Q. Um, okay, so basically, just for for the record, we really uh, this CFAC hadn't had any any discussion on the SRO since just for everybody's information uh, since probably about a year ago when uh, we um, voted five to two uh, to not fund the full 100% of the SRO. Historically, we've been funding 50% of it. Uh, some years it was a little lower, some years it was a little higher, but uh, due to us, many of us feeling that the street, the pavement management plan was a higher priority and that the Prop 30 had passed for the schools, that we would only fund 50% of it, not 100%. And so at that time, it was defunded, and that goes points to the Measure Q expenditures, which are now a little bit lower for the police department. Uh, so um, I think your questions or the questions that were submitted here and your answers plus what was described in here pretty much describes what the school district has met with city staff and they are interested in funding 100% of the salary and benefits with the provision that we, the city, Measure Q or somewhere else, fund the 
procurement of a additional police vehicle because we'll have to hire the city will have to hire additional person or move somebody around and also five thousand dollars in some supplies and a laptop so is that basically what's going on that it's an accurate description. Thank you. Okay, so before I ask the police up here, is there any discussion or any further questions, or sh can we just go ahead, Homer? I have some questions for the police chief. Okay. Anybody, any other discussion? Yeah, I have some questions. For him to, okay, so we have questions for you. Welcome. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. I guess the first question I have is, um, the SRO officer um, is going to be working at the school. I think schools are in session 180 days a year or something of that nature. And I understand that um, when the school is not in session, that individual will have vacation and training and that sort of thing. But that's not going to absorb the entire amount of time the school is off session. What is the SRO officer going to be allowed to do when school is not in session and he's not in training or on vacation or sick? So part of the agreement uh, when there's not school in session or when students are not in class, the SRO will participate in doing school assessments, threat assessments, school training, and then additionally we'll try and schedule her mandated training during those time frames as well so that we don't pull her out of the school during the regular calendar year. We've asked at the SRO and she, she has typically been very good about scheduling her vacations and that during that summertime as well. And then she'll be working with other school faculty staff to do uh, assessments for individual classrooms, uh, safety site inspections, those types of things, and working and training with additional SROs through the school district. Is there any possibility that the school board could say oh, there's still going to be available hours and that they'll try to charge the city back? I don't believe so, and we've included in the MOU that uh, we would also utilize the SRO for patrol scheduling as well during the off time uh, just to keep up their skill set. We want them there, again, they're a full-time police officer, so we want them working patrol and maximizing that skill set when they're not working within the school. Can I assume that um, the new vehicle will go into the police regular patrol pool? And yes. Okay. Yes. A suggestion for you when you write this up so if somebody doesn't ask why we need a $60,000 vehicle to go from Morro Bay Boulevard to the high school and back every day, that it becomes a police vehicle and not an SRO vehicle? Right, right. And, and our planning for that, sir, is to be able to extend the life of the vehicles we have to extend out our vehicle replacement fund. So we'll take one of our older, higher mileage vehicles, assign that to the school, and this new vehicle will go into rotation on the patrol staff. That's what I assume you do, but the yes, write-up yes. indicates something different yes sir and that's all I had Barbara okay thank you uh, along that line when you said uh, working with other faculty and staff in, in answer to Homer's question that would be faculty and staff in the Morro Bay schools or in, not in the Morro Bay school district correct and, district. and, and we're uh, a little more committed this year also to working more with Del Mar uh, as well so mm -hmm. that the, they'll work with both schools mm -hmm. and do training and site inspections mm -hmm. and safety threat assessments at both schools and we'll try to do those during those off times when school is not in session okay so that that makes sense that we'll, yes, because then we are indirectly receiving the benefit of this SRO officer uh, David questions or comments well, one bit of clarification one of the questions I had asked by email was about the availability of the SRO to assist Morro Bay PD. And the answer I got back indicated that it would be on basically on an emergency basis where you would get mutual aid similar to what you might be able to get from San Luis PD or the sheriff or whatever. This sounds like what you're saying is that the SRO may be put into patrol rotation during these off times. Did I, am I understanding that correctly? Are you, sir, are you referring to the off time as in non-school days? Non-school days. In non-school days, they could be placed back in patrol to keep their skill set sharp. During the school year, they will be dedicated full time to the school district. As an example, if I have a patrol, previously when we were sharing the SRO position, if a patrol officer were to call in sick, I would utilize that SRO to backfill that patrol position. In this instance, we will not be able to do that. They will be dedicated to the school district. So if an officer calls in sick, 
we will have to backfill that through our regular patrol personnel. The same thing with the school district, and that's one of the things in our agreement is if that officer calls in sick for the day, it would be no different than a teacher calling in sick. The school would just be without that officer for that day. Now, if it was a, a pre-planned event, some uh, mandated training that she has to attend, then we will work to backfill that position with the school district to make sure that they have maximum use of the school resource officer. So let's say uh, on, a, on a day when the, the school resource officer is in the, on the school campus and there's a serious incident, let's say an armed robbery or, or uh, a, a major chemical spill or something like that where you, you, need, you would need to have additional resources come in to assist your officers, is that, uh, is that school resource officer going to be available for Yes, that? and we would use her as we did uh, with all other AOA resources. Any emergency resource, we would call her out just like we would in requesting the Sheriff's Department or California Highway Patrol or Harbor or State Parks to come and assist us in an emergency situation. And because she's closer, that would obviously be one of, one of our closest resources. Okay. Is there going to be a charge back for that? or uh... I, I don't believe so. Okay. Can you, can you talk about the, the school resource officer? Obviously, campus security is an important function of the school resource officer providing a, a police presence there on campus for security purposes. Can you tell us some of the other duties that a school resource officer performs in addition to providing that security presence? Well, they're going to work with, with the school district and all the things that they need. They're going to do educational component. Uh, we're working with uh, on some grant items right now for both alcohol and tobacco grants to do educational components of those as well, to do those inside the classroom. Uh, they'll work with them in truancy issues, with um, disciplinary issues that the school has. Uh, we're working on trying to help put together some type of a diversion program so that we can not put these juveniles into the criminal justice system, uh, but working with an SR, hopefully, and the school district, utilize that as, as a, another option uh, to have instead of just straight disciplinary issues. But they'll work on, on, on training, uh, education, security, assessments, all of those items. John. So if the school district funds this, when would the uh, funding begin? Well, the district has indicated they would like to start as early as possible. So we were uh, anticipating that going to their district board tonight. Um, however, we've, we've revised part of the MOU, so they'll be looking at that over the next week or so. Um, I believe their next district meeting that it would go up for approval uh, will be the 1st of March, right around that first few days of March. Uh, and they would like to have somebody in place as soon as possible. They had initially looking at a March 9th start date, which I believe is a Monday, uh, or the 11th. It may have been March 9th or the 11th. Or, but, but that first Monday is what they were uh, initially anticipating on having them start. So it wouldn't be next school year, it would be no. this school year? No, okay. they, they and, were anticipating getting that body in place and, and effective immediately. And then um, Morrill Bay would just receive reimbursements? Is that how it works? Obviously, it's a Morrill, this is a Morrill Bay employee. Correct. The, so we, would, then, we would bill the district, uh, I believe, quarterly is what we set up. Quarterly, okay. So um, considering that the SRO hasn't actually been off-duty for that long, I mean, almost two years, I suppose, but you actually still have the vehicle and the equipment uh, that they were using, would it be at all possible to make this part of the regular budget cycle request rather than a mid-year budget request? I'm not sure. So I'll, I'll, let me, I'll help out let me, here. Let me, yeah. Can, I, can you yeah. want to phone a friend? Jump, jump in. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we could do this as part of the budget cycle. I think from a staff's perspective, we wanted to give the council, again, a full funding picture that there will be these additional costs because it is adding an FTE to the force. You know, we'll be backfilling um, the SRO current officer's position that will go into SRO. Um, we will need a new car. It's going to take probably uh, several months to get a new car purchased and built out. They have to put all the light bars and everything in that. Um, please uh, stop me if I'm misspeaking, Chief. Um, but from a council perspective, we wanted to say the school district is contributing this much. It is going to cost the city this much in X and one-time um, 
costs, and this is the funding source for that. Okay, so I'm, I'm not following because, so you had the SRO and you had your full force, and then when the SRO left that position, somebody at, on the force Retired. left, and that SRO, SRO took that person's place. Correct. So, so I guess at that point you must have had an extra vehicle. No, we still had the, the same patrol, you, same number of patrol vehicles, but we were sharing that with the school district. In this position, as a fully dedicated position, the district will have full use of that officer and vehicle at all times. I won't be able to, to pull that officer to handle normal calls for service or regular routine traffic. Sure, yeah. but So you didn't actually surplus any of your patrol vehicles during the last two years? You still have the same cars that you had two years ago. Correct. Okay. See, that's I'm not understanding why there's such an immediate need to get a new vehicle right now before the normal budget cycle, if you still have all the same number of vehicles that you had two years ago when you had an SRO. Well, what, one of our vehicles is over 80,000 miles now that we're will be going offline soon, so we're anticipating that as well. Well, okay. I just I, I'm I, I have a uh, an issue with mid-year budget reviews that end up making the expenses go up higher than what the revenues are being augmented. And that's the case with Measure Q this time around. You're looking at an additional 22000 in revenues and an additional 65500 in expenditures. And um, just, I, I just think that's not a good thing. I would just add that this is recommended to come from fund balance. So whenever we use fund balance, that's going to be a, the likely scenario. There was one hundred and forty-five thousand dollars, ish, um, sitting in, a, in the fund balance that was unassigned, and that's what we're proposing since these are one-time costs is to use that. And we discussed at the Measure Q in the presentation to staff that there was a fund balance. Typically, when we make that presentation, we recommend, and typically the recommendation has been to the streets, but we decide to hold off to see what the mid-year is. Um, but, but yeah, I see John's point, and I guess part of it is because we were only funding half of it, we you had a little more control over what you did with that vehicle. Now it's going to be parked there, you know, eight hours a day or whatever. How many days a week will this person, all five days? I'll work Monday through Friday. Okay, the standard Typically school. 7.30 to 3.30. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, John, anything else? Uh, Bill? Joe, uh, Lois? Uh, so if you take an officer out of uh, rotation to dedicate, uh, then you'll have a uh, backfill situation. Uh, so I don't have you know, the experience to know how long that takes, uh, but would imagine that you'll be in an overtime situation uh, oh, while that you. occurs. Is that the case or it, it could, yes. And right now we're currently in the process of backfilling a vacant position. We had an officer that retired in December, so we're, we had already started the hiring process. Uh, so we have multiple candidates that we're already in the process with uh, to backfill that position. Uh, ideally, if this approval goes through with the, with the district, we will take two of those candidates instead of just one. Oh, that would reduce so the we're, we're additional we're already in expense. the process to try and stay ahead of that. Perfect. Thank you. And you do think it's likely that you'll have more, at least two qualified candidates from the, how it's going now? I if you have can comment. Two candidates right now uh, mm -hmm. that I'm currently uh, in the background process. Okay, of. okay. So that's just, it's hard to predict, but yes, I understand. Okay, so I had, I'm sorry, I had a, a, a question. Um, Okay, so on the follow-up on expenses, I want to make sure we understand this. And, and just for everybody's benefit here, we were spending, I think, uh, Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, with salaries and benefit, about 72000 a year when we funded the school resource officer at 50%. That's correct. Okay. So, yes, this year it, it may, I agree with John, but it does seem reasonable if we have that um, fund balance uh, and our pavement management is moving along that maybe w we certainly can uh, authorize this. But my question is, uh, I, I want to ensure that this doesn't set a scenario where we're going to be funding 65000 in future years from Measure Q with the school district for whatever else will come up. And I'm sure there'll be good 
programs, but uh, you know, with maybe some of these grants and that, uh, we want to know what's the future going to look like. If you don't uh, expense that sixty thousand car purchase, you just outright buy it, or if you expense it versus capitalize. Next year, what would you come back to us for this? How is this going to save us money in the long run, or is it versus what we were spending before? Well, we see this as one-time purchase. Okay. On, on these funds, uh, so, the officers receive a uniform allowance. Uh, so after the initial purchase of the equipment, obviously, you know, gun belts, those types of mm -hmm. things are sized to the individual, so we can't just hand, right. hand that down. Mm -hmm. uh, the weapons, obviously, we we own, so we're not purchasing that. Mm -hmm. um, the the vehicle again will remain in the fleet mm -hmm. so that we don't anticipate hopefully we will continue to build up our vehicle replacement fund for future replacement uh, vehicles uh, as we move forward okay so you're not anticipating anything other than some insignificant expenses in future if we do this i want to you know i'm trying to get what happens if next year the school district says well we don't have any mon money but this is a wonderful program are they going to come back and ask us for you know two hundred thousand? That's not our intention. Well, I think we're in this position because when the school unfunded it last time, they realized the importance of having the SRO position. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, after the, that decision was made, we had incidents across the country like Parkland and the mm -hmm. others that uh, the school really needed to take the time to evaluate the importance mm -hmm. of having that position. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't see that as happening, but I, I can't predict uh, what, okay. what the school district will do in and the future. One other point to that, when they made their decision to defund, that was before Senate Bill 1090 passed mm -hmm. and was signed by Governor Brown last year, which uh, basically opens the money from pg and &E settlement from the Diablo closure, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, which, which pumps significant money uh, back into the school district. Um, they were planning for an $8 million okay. deficit each year. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know how much it, less it is now, but it, um, you know, the, the, the school superintendent is, is very, um, eager to get this up and running. I think they feel the schools are mm -hmm. vulnerable to um, a, a Parkland type situation and they've really educated themselves on that and see the vital link between uh, school safety and, and their local police department. Um, I don't imagine that they're going to waver from that, especially now that they have money opened up with Senate Bill 1090. Okay, uh, thanks. That and, and just for clarification, uh, when we discussed it, now we have different members, so maybe they would feel differently. It wasn't that the committee was not in favor of it. We were in favor of 50%, and that's typical with a minimal research we did uh, how other school districts handled other than some maybe very wealthy districts. So we felt, hey, this is good, 50%, but you know, transferring 100% of the cost and everything from one city entity to another government agency, we didn't think that was appropriate at the time. I'm based on the financial condition of this city. So um, go ahead, Bill, please. Yeah. A question. If it's 65000 this year, what is the estimated budget for next year? We'll be building a budget here shortly, so there has to be some amount of money that's laid aside. Is it 5000 a year? So we'll be coming back in uh, March and start the budget process, and that's where we'll have a conversation about um, the committee's interest in funding various things. For the school resource officer specifically, internally we'll have conversations about is there any training costs that might need to be requested sure. for Measure Q. But these larger, the $65,000 is, is the larger one-time cost that we wouldn't see coming back when we do the 1920 budget. And it's at the committee's discretion, whatever is presented to you to, to reject that and recommend council not approve it. Yeah, but there will be a budget line item that has money that would then be allocated for support of the SRO. There, there will be um, budget requests from the police department. I cannot say at this time that they would be for SRO or for something else. Fair enough. Thank you. Are there any other comments on this matter or questions? Lois. Just a quick one. Uh, if the money is coming from PG&E and PG&E is in bankruptcy, just something to keep in mind. Yeah, and it, it's, it, that's a great point. Um, it, attorneys for the county are, are looking into that, and they've been relatively reassured by PG&E that, um, that that money is secure. PG&E stands to benefit significantly from Senate Bill 1090 because they had about $300 million in employee training that would evaporate um, uh, without that. So um, we, we stand in a good place, but it is, is something we're following very closely. Good point. John. Yeah. Um, question. So um, will the agreement with the school district um, 
lock them into funding this position for a certain period of time, or is it just on an annual basis according to their budget appropriation? Right now, it's it's just open ended. It's it's an ongoing contract until uh, both of the parties agree to terminate. So they could choose to stop funding at any time. Well, they they could correct. And you have enough notification in there that if that uh, has a trickle-down effect of you having to, you know, eliminate staff, that you have the proper notice and everything? Yes. Thank you. So if the council were to decide to approve this only in the regular uh, budget process for next fiscal year, would you be able to equip this SRO on March 9th with what you have? I, I would manage to equip them. I, I, I'm going to lose a vehicle, like I said, that's over 80,000 miles, and obviously as a police, police pursuit rated vehicle, I can't run them much longer than that for safety reasons. So these costs, I'm, I'm still going to have to, it would, it would have to come up out of vehicle <coughs> replacement fund a year or so earlier. Okay. That's a good point, because if this only lasts one year for uh, you know, who knows what reason, then you still have, you have purchased a car, but there's still some benefit for us, because that goes back into your pool and would... Well, we would still need the vehicle. Yeah, right. We just wouldn't have to replace it at that, that time. At that, as soon as otherwise, flying, yeah, correct. granted. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Yeah, the only a, comment I'd like to make is that uh, Major Q has been purchasing police vehicles, um, all the police vehicles since the inception of the sales tax increase in 2006. So buying another police car is not a special, unusual situation. Oh, thanks for that history, Herm, uh, Homer. Very good. Go ahead, John. Yeah, this is a related, because it's a Measure Q question um, while the police chief is here. Um, I got a response to one of the questions that said the admin sergeant was budgeted for 16500 oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. and the actual cost will be approximately 6000 How was that savings achieved? The 16500 I believe, was the, the long-term cost, uh, I think over five-year projected through the step increases of what that position would cost over the course of that five-step process. So we only used, I think, I want to say roughly 6,000 of that. Is, that. is that correct? Yeah, so there was some funding from this that came out of our COPS grant that we um, were able to utilize first instead of Measure Q. Um, so that resulted in savings from Measure Q. I think we relayed to the committee and heard um, loud and clear during budget season that um, for some of the ongoing operating things like the body-worn cameras and that kind of thing, you granted us a, a reprieve for a year but didn't want to see Measure Q uh, funds offsetting what would typically general fund um, equipment purchases, if I'm characterizing that correctly. I don't know if any, the committee remembers that, but we were able to use some COPS grants that resulted in some savings. Um, it's up to the committee's discretion today if you would like to authorize use of some of that savings for the additional um, body-worn camera expenditure, or we can reclassify that to the general fund and do a budget adjustment there. It's about $4,000, I believe. So where's that on the agenda? What page? That we didn't um, oh, that call was, that out I saw 20, oh, okay. Um, I that was in one of the questions, and we were going to bring that up as a, as a oh, okay, question okay. for the committee. All right, all right. Um, okay, so any other... I think we should probably look at all this uh, while you're here, so the uh, Measure Q. So I saw an increase in revenues for the 22,000, um, and I think... So is there any further discussion on that, or we want to entertain a motion, or... Go ahead, John. Um, just another question for information. Um, on the um, CAD and mobile fees that the Metro Q is paying now, that was budgeted for 24000 and I guess there was uh, an issue with posting that to the general fund. Y and you, your answer was that it was going to be corrected, and... Um, There'd be a journal entry made. What, what is the correct amount for the first six months? Do you have that? 
it, it was listed in there as two thousand five hundred and eighty-two dollars out of a twenty-four thousand dollar budget. Um, let's see if Bonnie has that um, documentation with her. If not, we can send that information back to the committee. But does does it look like that budget item is going to be correct, though? I mean, twenty four thousand is what it's going to cost. Does that? That would be my expectation. If it were to be different from that, I think we'd be having this discussion at third quarter again, okay. with another opportunity to review. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, so the 24,000 includes the bomb and drug task force, which is about 12,000 somewhere in that area. Just the CAD and data line portion of that 24,000 is about $4,400. But there's more to that. That 24,000 that's in there is more than just the CAD and data lines. And you expect to spend that this year, right? It's billed quarterly, and so I had forgotten that Measure Q approved that funding, and so I paid it through the general fund. We discovered that a week and a half ago, and it's going to be redirected, but there's two more bills that are going to be coming that haven't been paid yet, and so it, just the CAD and data line portion is about 44. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Yes, that explains it, I think. All right, so I think we have two items on the table. Uh, number one is the, uh, Jennifer, the recommendation on the $22,000 increase uh, for the Measure Q, correct? For the revenues, correct. Yes, and then the second thing we should probably do a separate motion would be our recommendation to approve or disapprove, whatever, this expenditure for the uh, 65000 for the support of the school resource officer. Um, considering what we've discussed, it would not be a brand new vehicle assigned to the school and that um, there would be no uh, commitment or guarantee of future expenditures uh, of this magnitude this, it, that is a one time. So that's kind of what I think is on the table. Does somebody want to make a motion or comment on that? Go ahead, Lois. Well, I would make a motion to um, uh, accept the recommendation to uh, for the twenty-two thousand dollar increase. Okay, thank you, Lois. Is there a second to that motion? I second that. All right, Bill, a second of that. Any further discussion on that, or anything else, so we can get that part done? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion carries six zero. Thank you. Okay, so any further discussion on the um, school? Thank you, Chief. Any further discussion on the uh, school resource officer request for expenditure from the um, savings, if you will? <laughs> fund balance, yeah. Fund balance, yeah. We, we consider it a savings account, but it's really a carryover fund balance from previous years, so. Um, okay, somebody wanna make a motion? I'll move that we uh, fund $65,000 this first year with the understanding that uh, there will be a budget item next year at a much lower cost. Okay. I'll second that. Homer second that. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Homer. So that motion is for the one-time expenditure for the 65000 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Motion carries 5-1. Okay. Um, if I could ask, is there any comment from the committee on the um, overage for the body-worn cameras? 
Um, it was $22,000 was budgeted. The actual expense, I think, was twenty six. We can utilize some of the savings from the admin sergeant position, or we can recommend an additional general fund budget adjustment of 4000 to offset the difference. That seems like a reasonable approach to me. Yeah. Oh, I think the money ought to come out of Measure Q. Oh, for the body cameras? Uh, the, the carryover, yeah. I or mean, the if, if the budget would have been done properly last spring, it would have been $27,000, and we would have approved it because it's equipment mm -hmm. for the police department. I mean, it lines right up with what the mission statement is in Measure Q. And in fairness, the police department was a little bit shortchanged last year in terms of we didn't fund the SRO, so I'm okay with that. Any other comments? Any thoughts on that? Everybody okay with that? Uh, go ahead, Homer, if you want to just make a motion on that. I make a motion that we recommend the uh, over budget for the body cameras be funded out of the um, uh, carryover from uh, the prior year. I'll second. Thank you, Dave. Any further discussion on that one? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Thanks, Homer. Good point. Okay, so now we're still on the uh, budget update. Concerned on time. Okay, so back to the agenda. This staff report, this is still item B4, uh, begins on page five of the staff report or page, uh, doesn't say, five of the staff report. Oh, actually, page five of 58, not the staff report, page one of the staff report for item B4. Um, all right, so do we wanna just kinda go through that quickly in the order it was presented? Uh, Jennifer did an excellent, in my opinion, excellent summary of everything in there, and I noticed there were several questions, but I think if we go through it uh, chronologically and um, maybe some of the questions weren't answered to some of the members' satisfaction. Maybe they were, but we can discuss the important things. So uh, let's go through that. Let's, uh, we've already done the measure Q. So let's go, page nine is an introduction. Uh, executive summary, well done. How about uh, general funds, some of the, um, taxes or items on there, if you guys would like to point through those. Homer, I think you Are we going to do these in order of... Um, I think we should, right? In okay. Order, the so, way it appears on the agenda. Or in the report? Yes, in, in the report. Words, so you'll start with the uh, other taxes? Yes. Okay. What page are you on? Oh yeah, other taxes, yeah, all right. He's on page 11 of 58, and that's correct. The rest was introductory material, which I think we're okay. pretty much okay with. So anything on uh, other taxes, which is a subset of the key revenue analysis, sales tax, T-bid, any of that. Uh, the recommendations were pretty clear. Um, I have a question on the franchise fees. Okay, go ahead. Um, First, I want to thank you very much for taking the time yesterday to answer my questions, and several of them I'm going to re-ask again. Um, what, do you know if there'll be any impact on the electric franchise fees for community choice energy? Um, we do receive franchise fees from PG&E, um, so th those would likely um, go down, I would predict. Um, this CCE will contribute to franchise fees much as PG&E, um, does so it should be cost neutral to the most extent that would be the expectation Okay um, It was everybody okay with the uh, recommend let's see on the other taxes. I think you had a recommendation uh, To increase uh, the budget for the on the sales tax up 48 K 47 490 Okay, I don't want to skip over anything, but I want to kind of go through it in order Franchise fees, okay, that brings us property tax. You had that budget recommendation up 95,000. That seemed reasonable with the explanation there. 
And 308000 charged for services. Again, that was um, on the plan check fees, plus to accommodate the cannabis applications and a few other things. Any questions for Jennifer there? or I have a question on the uh, charges for services. Okay, go ahead. Um, unrelated to the actual numbers here. Uh, when do you expect to receive the study to adjust the uh, cost allocation plan and the uh, fee increases? Um, we have a second version of our cost allocation plan um, draft that we just reviewed as a, a city team last week. We're meeting again with them on March 12th and 13th, um, and that lays the basis for all the fee impacts. So I think that we'll have um, new cost allocation numbers in time for our budget adoption cycle, 1920. I think we'll have to um, adjust fees a second time this year, and we might not get those until maybe August time frame. Okay. Um, just for Lois and Bill's benefits, cost allocation plan is another word for corporate headquarter expense. <laughs> Chargebacks for services rendered. <laughs> so where does that fall? Yeah, where does that fall? But where are we talking about charges for services right now? Is, is uh, that part of that budget then? So charges for services, um, is, they're incurred through our fees. Okay. Our fees are based off of our um, cost allocation across all of our departments, so they're kind of foundation for developing those. The actual cost allocation plans are in the transfers in in our budget. Um, I think we want, uh, I think I might have given you a copy of that sheet where it shows the like harbor and water and sewer transfer money to the general fund. Okay. All right. Uh, that brings us to licenses, permits, business tax. I know I'm going through it quickly. Um, the next adjust, uh, adjustment was for salaries and, and benefit. Well, wait a minute. This is all the revenues. Is there anything else on the revenues or taxes or questions or comments? Right, then let's go jump over to the uh, general fund key expenditure analysis. Salaries and benefits, that was an upward adjustment of 183K. That's primarily in line with the fire rela uh, related personnel cost and the mutual aid. So I think the explanation was good. Any? I have a comment about that. Please comment. Go ahead. Um, I subtracted the. Um fire mutual aid expense from the uh, year-to-date expenditures, and you were still over 2.4%. And I understand that um, a good portion of that is the pre-funding of certain pension expenses. And before you present this to the city council, you may want to include those pre-funded expenses. Um, so for no other reason, make you guys look good. Duly noted, will do. <laughs> I like that, do Linda. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Homer. Supplies, 48K, and uh, you have it summarized the general fund adjustments on page 22 of the agenda, as well as page 23 and 24. Any other, any questions on those? I, I, I had a comment about page 21. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I jumped through that too fast. Thank you, Homer. Go ahead. Um, just for, for clarity's sake, I suggest that you um, change other, the word other revenue to reimbursement for the mutual aid and show the full 271. And then in the expenditure category, show the transfer to the vehicle fund of the 70,000, so it foots back to your uh, um, agenda discussion. Just okay. a little clearer. If that's easier to follow, then that's an easy adjustment to make. Yeah. <coughs> okay, you got that. Thank you. All right, so now we're on, you've summarized the uh, general fund adjustments. Um, I didn't have any, do you guys have any questions on that? That's on page 22. And then a uh, verbal summary, or written summary, I should say, on pages, on page 23. Anything there? Page 24 and 25, we have some uh, financial statements.
And those look pretty much in order. I see the overtime, uh, the adopted budget, and then the finance projection. But again, that's mutual aid, so I think we're, we're okay with most of that. Okay, let's jump over to the enterprise funds real quick. Harbor, that's on page 26 of 58 of the agenda. And then all the uh, the water and sewer fund and the transfers, I think we, that might merit some discussion. That's on page 27. Am I going too fast, guys? Okay, I'm concerned about the, the WRF report. Um, so on the water and sewer fund adjustments, um, did you have any comments, Homer, or Jennifer? Yeah, I you think that anything? you need a, a I'll explain a, that a, a little more explanation. Yeah, um, a written explanation in this so people understand what you're doing. I can add why some, you're doing it. Yeah, I can add some detail. This is the year end um, from seventeen eighteen transfers that were left in the revenue funds to the accumulation fund. Um, we do that every year, but um, when you do that, when you run a budget report, which the auditors will look at, they will see that we transferred money from one fund to the other without appropriation for it. Um, so this is kind of a cleanup to get that appropriation authority, and it's it's moving that cash balance over to the savings account. So I can add language in here that would explain yeah. that. Uh, just for other people to read it, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, for the presentation to council on that, and when you have yeah. a probably a larger audience, presumably. Okay, go ahead. So just want to verify that the uh, enterprise funds have paid the full six months cap in these figures? Yes, I believe they have. I, I, we transfer them quarterly. There was okay. one that um, we used to not do that with Measure Q in the fire department, um, that 120000 that we send, but we've started to do that quarterly now as well. Um, and the only reason I pause is because I put a hold on some of them. For instance, we haven't sent any Measure Q money to pavement management because there's been no, there was no work done. Um, but I'm I'm sure that I'm pretty sure that we've done all of the cap allocations for the enterprise funds. Okay, thank you. And can I just back up a couple of pages? I, I missed one thing I wanted to ask. Go about. ahead. Yeah. Um, it's on page 23, I guess. It has to do with the. Uh, phone system to bring fiber optic into each city building for an internet-based phone system. Um, why, why would you not pay that out of the information technology internal service fund? It wasn't a budgeted item in the IT fund. We could easily make the adjustment there. Um, we put it in general fund because our estimates are showing that we're, we're going to have sufficient revenues over expenditures to support that. We're working to kind of build up our IT fund to the new kind of target and minimum funding levels. So as long as there was available funds in the general fund. Would, would that be the type of expenditure that would normally be normally be paid out of the uh, internal service fund? For the, for the wiring component, yes. Our monthly regular phone bills are for the general fund or whatever department is using, you know, the phone service. We allocate those out. But, but like purchase of equipment? It would typically come from an IT fund. But we would normally budget for that as well, and we didn't budget for this. Okay, but you could always do a budget amendment, right? We could. So what's the benefit of doing it this way? There's general fund revenues to support it. Otherwise, we'd use fund balance from the IT fund, or we would do a transfer from the general fund to the IT fund to support the purchase out of the IT fund. So it would be two adjustments versus one. Okay, but I mean, for historical records as to what you're spending on these types of things, isn't that kind of one of the reasons why you... Is your microphone on? Yeah, why you have an internal service fund? So you can capture those numbers and know how much you're spending on these types of things? If, I mean, generally, yes, we would look it up by vendor. I mean, that really is what we would do. But you're right, you could go through a lot of these documents are kept for historical purposes. So um, we could make a note in the budget that that's what that was for. Um, I have a question about that. Uh, the previous city manager allocated a pretty significant amount of money for um, fiber optic bringing fiber optics into the city and stuck it in a separate bucket. Mm -hmm. um, did that ever get reduced? That, that money is sitting in our strategic spending um, 
strategic so investment spending plan. It's in one of our trust and agencies account. It, this is not part of that or isn't being used towards that. The word fiber optic is in both of those. In his Hi. proposal and this expenditure. The, from what I understand, the proposal was for high-speed internet to bring through the strategic spending plan, and that's about $150,000. Right. This is separate from that. This is fiber optics specifically for the phone line. Okay. <laughs> so we still have the 150000 in one of the funds, basically, is what you're saying. Okay. All right. Uh, John, are you satisfied? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, all right, so the we're we're back on uh, where were we? Oh, um, page, page thirty. Thirty. Thank you. Um, you know what? I think we ought to defer on page thirty because we're going to have in the next item. Or do you want to? I'm concerned about jumping around. Or if, that's the WRF. But I thought Eric was going to present something in item B four. Um, that is going to be presented as part of council discussion. The, the, what's on page 30 is what we presented to you last year in a similar format as part of, mm -hmm. uh, part of the mid-year update. So if you want to skip that and, and wait until the wharf item, we can do that. That's fine. Yeah, could you explain why, like, for the water fund, it has a recommended budget revision of revenue and also a recommended budget revision for expenditures, but yet the other funds just show a revision of expenditures. What's, is that a total difference now? What was the original budget for uh, the water fund revenue? Are you referring to the? Yeah, in page, page. 27 for the water fund. Oh, okay. Fund, or just as recommended budget revision revenue is 3.067573. Um, the revenue adjustment for the sewer fund is missing on page 27. It's listed on page 28. It's 3.829219 to offset the expenditure. This is what you were just talking about, right? Is that okay? That was just an error typo. There should be an offsetting revenue and expenditure for both water and sewer because they get transferred out of one fund and right. into the other. So the recommended revision, this is just what the new budget revision number is as opposed to what was the previous budget um, number? These are the, the recommendations to transfer the savings, if you will, from I last see. year to our got savings it. account. I understand. Remember, she said yeah. the auditors. These are yeah. the transfers, got it. Yeah. We're trying to eliminate a lot, as much transfer activity or at least provide visibility because it really causes a lot of confusion too when we try to go over this. but. Um, Okay, thank you, Bill. Uh, all right, so we'll just hold off on page 30 on the WRF for a minute. On the other funds, the T-bid, and there was a couple other ones there. Measure Q, we've already done the T-bid. Uh, yeah, question on T-bid. T-bid, go ahead, John. So, so this new accumulation fund in T-bid, you're moving 273,521 from T-bid to the accumulation fund? And it looks like you did it back in maybe November because it's already in the December cash sheet. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the T-bid, so, you know, so I see that full amount in the T-bid accumulation fund. But if I look at the T-bid fund, it has a cash balance of negative 113000 So, how, you know, how do you do that? A lot of our funds, if you look through, you'll see their general fund is negative at times because of the timing of when um, the revenues come in. That's not, that's not uncommon. So we took, once we closed the books out, um, the cash balance in our 007, which is our T-bid fund, um, and that was 273, 5.20, and 52 cents. Um, and that's what was transferred over to the new accumulation fund. It's slightly different from fund balance listed in the CAFR, um, because it doesn't take into account some of the, you know, whatever's outstanding for receivables or that kind of thing. Um, but it was what was sitting in their cash. What we will expect is as we continue to, TBIT is going to spend money throughout the year when they need to. Revenues will come in to offset those. By year end, we should have um, cash in there again as fund balance. If not, they'll have to use some from their accumulation fund to offset that. You know, we wouldn't close the year with a negative cash balance for them. But throughout the year, 
and a variety of funds. They go positive or negative depending on the timing of revenues. So then um, let's say that by the time the fiscal year ends, the T-bid has $20,000 in there, cash. Will you then transfer that over to the accumulation fund so that the T-bid zeroes out? That w well, we'll close the books first to make sure there's nothing. But when right. we close the books, if there's 20000 sitting there, we would transfer it to accumulation. Okay. And then what do you close it to? Do you close it to cash or do you close it to fund balance or... We write it from, I'm going to let Sandy um, tell you, but we, we close it out from, I think it's from cash to transfer the cash from um, 007 to 954, which is accumulation. Yeah, you, you have to think about the cash all being in a great big pool, you know, for the entire city. Uh, and then we have that cross-fund report that delineates how much is designated for each fund. But when I, we close this out, we're just closing it out from the operating fund, which would be 007, to the accumulation fund designated for TBID. And then when you add those together, it's still the same cash. Okay, I understand. But let, let's assume that on June 30th, that fund has $40,000 unassigned fund balance but only $20,000 cash, how much do you transfer to the accumulation fund? 20000 in cash, because that's what's sitting there. And that's why it doesn't match the CAFR. There's, I think the CAFR said there's 294 in fund balance or, or something to that effect. OK. And what if it's the other way around? What if it has more cash than it has fund balance? If there's a negative cash balance at June thir when we close the year, so no, let's say it, let's say it has more cash than fund balance, which can happen depending on what the liabilities and other assets are. So let's say it has forty thousand dollars cash, but only twenty thousand dollar unassigned fund balance. How much do you transfer at that point? In practicality, we would probably transfer forty thousand dollars, and then when we needed, if we needed to take money out of accumulation to pay any liabilities, we transfer back. Hmm. Okay, thank you. I have a question about TBIT. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, I know this This was a recent city council policy approval, but why are you holding so much money in the accumulation fund when I would think that the hoteliers would prefer that money be, some portion of it be used for marketing? So this was a, a big discussion at council. Um, in terms of what the right amount is, we, as staff, recommended holding a balance there. So if the economy were to turn, if you wanted to support one big time expenditure like Amgen, TBIT is supporting the cost for Amgen. If there was another um, event or capital something that the board felt was they wanted to use their assessment funds for, they would have a pot of money there that they could do something with. Um, if the economy turned, they could continue with their marketing, they could continue with programs, and maybe even though the assessments weren't coming in as, as high as they normally do. Um, so that was, that was the, why the recommendation was made and what council approved it on. Um, unrelated to specifically the T-bid, but I noticed in the notes here you talked about the cash balance versus fund balances. When do you plan to uh, migrate all of the funds to fund balance from cash balance? I hope to do that with the 1920 budget cycle. Okay. Hope is underlined. Thank you. And I think um, if, if you saw, there was a, a council member, uh, Martin, asked about the cash balances with the quarterly reports. We are supposed to report that per the new policies that were passed, so we'll um, try to get that in before this goes to council. But it, definitely when you see the third quarter report. Okay, thanks, Jen. And then I, I think the last thing here is the pavement management plan. That's on page 35. If anybody has any, uh, we see the transfers in and the carryover from last year, so. I assume we'll be getting bills for that, <laughs> lagging. Work, work has begun, so you'll see expenditures on that in the yeah. third quarter. We've seen the work around the city, so good. Okay, so. And this year, I'm hoping that we do not see any personnel costs in there? 
recall that being a pretty clear directive. So it, there's no budgeted personnel costs, and we'll, we'll monitor the expenditures. You'll get the accumulated transaction report that you'll be able to see and ensure that there aren't any. Right, right. There shouldn't be any personnel costs in there at all. Okay. Good point. All right, so anything on the summary of the key recommended budget adjustments? Is everybody uh, satisfied with those? All right, let's see. Uh, Jennifer, do we need a motion that we uh, CFAC also approves, uh, concurs with the recommended budget uh, revenue and expenditure adjustments? And you can do that now, or we could let our public works director present his capital adjustments. Okay. We're going to um, incorporate those into the report. Oh, that's okay. And then we'll do council. one. Um, so maybe if I can ask uh, Mr. Livick to head up to the podium and go through the, the memo that he submitted. Um, outlining what those adjustments will be. Welcome. Thank you, Rob Leivik, uh, Public Works Director. I uh, submitted a min memo to um, CFAC regarding um, basically replacing the um, water and sewer capital projects in the existing fiscal year 1819 budget with the ones from the one wa approved one water plan. So um, we have specific projects now. Um, accounted for in our one water plan, four um, in water, and two projects in our wastewater fund. Um, uh, a little over a million dollars in our um, water projects and um, almost $800,000 in our sewer projects. Now, um, some might remember there was, we we're quite a bit more optimistic when we were first developing the one water plan, but as we were bringing um, those CIPs in combination with the WERF project through the rate setting process um, and a goal to keep the rates as low as possible. Some of those projects need to be deferred. Um, all the projects are still in the capital projects listing. They're just in outer years. Um, so um, these are the projects that we're proposing for to be um, completed by um, um, June of this year, and then we'll have a slate of projects for next year. So all the projects are still in the 126 million WRF project. All, just all these projects are within the existing rate structure. Right. Um, proposed rate structure. So proposed. Adopted rate structure. Adopted the $41 right. increase effective Correct. July 1 of this year. Okay. But these, you're, uh, we need, you would like these to be in the fiscal year 2018 2019. Yes, because we had placeholder projects in mm -hmm. the current budget. We're going to replace them with actual projects. Okay. And they're all going to be done, presumably, or well done by June 2000. That's the plan. This June? Yes. Okay. Four months and one now week. These are all increases to the capital budget then for 18 19. Um, they are changes to the capital budget. So these are, um, I can't remember exactly how much we had in our um, water sewer capital budget, but uh, these basically get swapped out for the projects that were in there. These are more realistic. These are projects. These are actual that, costs. These are based on realistic uh, on, um, a um, needs assessment for yeah. the both water and sewer systems. Homer, or anybody, any well, questions? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Uh, but anybody else want to? Um, part of this could be my age and inability to remember things, but if I recall correctly when the Blue Ribbon Committee met last spring and we were presented with the draft of the one water plan and the expenses and the projects, we moved a lot of those around to accommodate the lowest possible rate increase we could handle. And you and the utilities manager came back and said, in the first five years, we want to do, we need to do these projects. Um, and in the final plan, we laid out the number of projects that will be done in the first five years. And I looked at the the plan and the the plan the city council approved in November, 
and there were six collection projects scheduled for 2019. Um, and you only have two on your list. And in your response to me, in the email that you were kind enough to respond, um, you said that once the WRF project is complete, we'll reprioritize the water and sewer collection CPIs. Well, the, the, the WRF project's not supposed to be completed until 2022. Correct. So all of these projects that were supposedly deemed critical, um, it looks like from your response that these may be slipped out three or four years. And I'm just curious at why some of these haven't gotten started. I mean, one of the, the projects you deferred, or actually three projects, was replacing the, uh, the main line on the in Beachcomber, as an example. Um, but that's not on the list at all. Um, and when can the, can we expect, or the community can expect to see some of these collection projects started? The ones that are identified in the first five years in the one water plant. So, yes, there were many projects identified in the first five years. We actually broke it down to a year-by-year -year basis right. in the um, table. These are the projects scheduled for fiscal year 1819. We have projects scheduled for 1920 and 2122. Um, I have my one water plan. I can read them to you if you would like. Uh, well, I which, have the schedule. And, and there's... The so... Um, the final adopted plan only right. included two projects for fiscal year 1819. Uh, okay, you may want to go back and look at it's the, what's on the website. The, this is, comes right off the website. Okay, I, I give up. Okay, we'll have to check. I, mean, we'll, we'll, I, I we'll thought that was my recollection as John, well. John's got a copy of what came off oh, the okay. website if he could... Other, fortunately, it's... The print is too small. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got it. Maybe we can put it up on here. Excuse me, Matt. Can you give that to him? Yeah, Rob. That's even Rob, the uh, one water plan information that I have from the Blue Ribbon Commission meetings did show the three beachcomber projects uh, scheduled for 2019, <laughs> but perhaps those were changed in the final adopted plan. I, I don't know. That I, what I have is from the Blue Ribbon Commission. No. That's my recollection is those were um, deferred to meet the cash flow needs to for the rates to support the rates. That's correct. But, and this was supposedly I have a cleaner version that might actually be readable. We can put up. I apologize for taking this time. But. Uh, no, and it may seem like uh, I would apologize to the staff that were belaboring the point, but this keeps coming up in public comment at council meetings, and I, I think it's important that we understand what projects were in there and what's included in those costs and when they're going to get done. Right? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Okay, this is from um, the approved plan. This is uh, um, table ES11 from the report. So um, um, CIP phasing has in 
20, 18, 19 has the projects that are identified in the memo. In 1920 has Gravity Main Beachcomber Drive, another Gravity Main along Beachcomber Drive, um, the third phase of Beachcomber Drive listed in, in 2020, um, replacement of more manholes. Um, so um, about $900,000 in um, rehabilitation uh, rehab projects in 2019-2020. Um, um, then we in um, 2021-2021, we move on to um, starting on the Main Street project. 2021-22 um, um, continues on the Main Street project, pick, picks up some more projects in the um, beach tract, and then um, fiscal year 2023, um, additional projects in the um, beach tract. So, okay, you may want to check the one water plan this on the website to see whether it matches the schedule you've got in your hand. Okay, um, the. We'll, we'll double check that, but the link well, that I included in the memo, um, the URL okay. down at the bottom of the page, oh, okay. um, shows what I believe is the currently adopted one water plan that reflects this schedule. And, and you plan to implement that schedule? Yes. And not defer till after the water, wastewater treatment? No, plans. but we may be able to add more projects in once we have um, an idea of the cost of money and where we are on the, um, um, as we move forward with, get substantially complete with the project. Okay, thank you. Excuse me for. That's okay, that's okay. I, I see we're looking at two different things, obviously. Right. Okay, thanks Rob for You're checking welcome. that out. And we'll ch we can check out the link as well, so. Um, all right, so do we have any other questions for Rob on this? I have one. Oh, go ahead. Um, why didn't you make a recommendation to revise the wastewater treatment budget? Um, it appeared that we were fairly close to 50 percent. Um, well, on, on our schedule, on page 30 um, of our report, um, expenditures through December 31st are 274,000. And the uh, the budget is um, nine million three hundred and seventy eight thousand. Oh, for the not for the wastewater treatment plant budget for the for the WRF project. Uh, cost. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah I, I'm just curious why it, because these numbers look. We're hoping to spend a lot of money in the next uh, uh, few months uh, once we get uh, um, moving further on design. Um, I know of well over a million dollars in invoices we've received in the past couple of weeks on the project. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I noticed from the check runs that um, there were invoices from last summer that were paid in January. And I know this one of Barbara's fanatic points is timely processing of invoices. And um, there, why can't the invoices be processed in 60 days? Well, I would think those people want their money, don't they? Generally they do, but sometimes we go back and forth on the invoices to get them correct. Um, there was a couple of invoices that were... Um, um, missed in the Procore b or picked up in the, we changed to a new uh, project management software. So um, they were inadvertently not paid. Are you still using the Procore for other? Uh... We've stopped using Procore oh. for this project. Uh, yeah. It didn't seem the value that we were getting out of it was worth the cost that we were paying for it. Um, so we've switched to um, using something that we already owned, mm -hmm. um, Office 365, and using the workflow. <laughs> Microsoft, that, yeah. yeah my, the wor workflow that's built into that as a tool to manage the project. Um, so um, it's much simpler and easier to track than using the Procore software. And that was on a lease subscription, so we didn't... It, we paid for a license, so we never oh, okay. really owned uh, it. No, I anyway. understand. It was 
go, going up to almost forty five thousand uh, dollars. <laughs> That's what I remember. Okay. Yeah. I also thought in the Daytona five hundred uh, that Procore car caught on fire, so I thought the cost might be going up more, so maybe that's good that we're... <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else on this so we can move on to the uh, Eric's report? Uh, Jennifer, would you like a motion now for these adjustments? That would be great. Thank you. Okay, so I will make a motion that we accept all of staff's, finance staff's recommended adjustments for the, um, all of the funds, including revenue and expenditure adjustments. I'll second. Second that, Lois. Any discussion on that? Is that motion sufficient? Can all right, I, all in I favor? Just get one clarification. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Go um, ahead. The fiber optics for the phone. It, is that to stay in general fund IT? Uh, is that if the committee is more comfortable with it going to IT, we'll do a, an adjustment from the general fund to transfer money to IT to pay for it. I, that's an easy thing to do, and I'm, I'm completely okay with doing that. I just want to make sure that's the committee's. I don't have any. Do you, does anybody feel strongly about that this time? It's not significant. Do it the easiest way. Whatever's easiest. Okay. You got enough on your plate. Um, okay, so the motion stands as indicated. And s did we get a second for that? Lois, right? Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. That motion carries six to zero on the budget adjustments. Okay, so can I rearrange the order? I'm concerned that we're going to run out of time on. Uh, it, skip the investment report. That's item B5 right now and go right to B6. Sure. Okay. Guys okay with that? All right. Thank you. Uh, so B6 uh, is the item on the WERF as as well as uh, CFAX B, B6 sub bullet one. Um, receive input on CFAX rule and review of the financials for the WRF project. So uh, we have a council member here, our liaison. Uh, Marlis, if you would like to come up and maybe you can make some preliminary comments on what our role is so that we ha understand that. And then I'll ask uh, Eric to present. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Yes, uh, Barbara actually asked me uh, to clarify this and just to let you know that um, I was the person who agendized it as a, a, a council uh, issue uh, and really at Barbara's uh, recommendation because she serves on both the WRFCAC and on CFAC and so understood the roles and, and could see how things were working on both uh, advisory boards. Uh, the council did meet a couple, two meetings ago and discussed it and so I'm just going to share with you essentially what our discussion was about uh, because we did have a discussion about this. Um, we felt that the CFAC, because of your financial expertise on this committee, really could provide the over arching uh, financial oversight, fiscal oversight, that you actually do on the budget. So you would be reviewing all of the quarterly reports on the project. And the council's main concern is that we stay within the budget for the project. And so uh, that is what you would be looking at and making sure of and certainly alerting us if anything looks awry in the quarterly reports, uh, let us know and, and so that we can take some action. Um, we may also ask you to look at some other financial issues along the way, such as the conditions or terms of uh, the loans or whatnot. Uh, but the WRFCAC will continue to review all of the technical aspect, aspects of the project, and there are, of course, course, costs associated with the technical aspects. So they would be looking at costs, and they understand fully that we are trying to keep costs down, so they would be taking that into consideration when they make their deliberations about the technical aspects of the project. Um, I might also add, just uh, for, especially for the new members, that we always try to have advisory board input before a council decision, but there are times when the timing is such that we are not able to have a meeting 
and have you review um, an issue beforehand. And I know that Barbara knows that because we didn't always get to review the budget before it was submitted to council. But that's just a, a timing issue and it, we don't mean to slight you. So we appreciate everything that you do and we appreciate uh, your taking on this role. And if there's anything you'd like to tell us about the role and um, the amount of time you think it's going to require, please do so. So we'd be happy to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Marlis. All right, any questions on that, or is, is that? No, is the uh, WRFCFC, or is that, that organization another city council as well? Uh, no, that the WRFCAC is the Water Reclamation Facility Citizens Advisory Committee. It's a special purpose citizens advisory committee um, that was established in September of 2014. And they serve in an advisory recommendation, recommended rule. Uh, they used to meet monthly, and we still hold a scheduled meeting open date the first uh, Tuesday of the month. But now, after uh, some of the technical and all the siting studies and geological and everything else has uh, gone decreased a little bit right now, they haven't been meeting as frequently, but we still meet on an ad, as needed basis to provide uh, working with Eric, the Ciceris, uh the program manager, and Rob, and to provide um, advice, direction, clarification, citizen input, etc. So, who are the members of that committee? Uh, there's uh, now there are seven members. Um, I'll have to. Uh, I can. I don't know all the last. Myself, I'm the vice chair. Paul Donnelly. Um, and they were appointed by the city council. They were then? appointed by the city council. Yeah, most of them have expertise in uh, Valerie Louvelet and uh, Jesse Barone. Um, I'm probably forgetting somebody, but I know I am. Uh, they were appointed by city council. Most of them have experience in project engineering, uh, some technical uh, purchasing. Uh, myself, with you know some finance and contract experience. It's on there. It's all on the website. I'll see if I can get it for you. Yeah, but it's basically that group. So they would still be involved in reviewing. They've been uh, participating also in um, uh, review of uh, RFPs that go out before they go out so that we have uh, some extra expertise applied to the RFP that's going to go out for a particular component of the WRF. Anything to add, Eric? Um, no, I think that's a pretty good summary. Okay, thanks. Well, if someone's going to provide oversight of a program to go separate finance from technical is just not a very effective way to do something. You really need to have most programs that overrun or overrun because of technical problems, not because of financial mismanagement. So you really need them to work very closely together. So, I mean, I see what the council recommendation is to have what the CFAC should do. To me, it seems very awkward to be separating that from the oversight of the entire program management of uh, the WRF. And if we are going to separate it like that, we should at least have one or two members of this committee be on the oversight committee as well. And that's a consideration. And, and let me tell you why I recommended that. Uh, first of all, Eric Ciceris, is, who would be presenting shortly here, is the overall program manager. Um, and this has been talked about before. And actually, a year ago, I spoke in public comment in front of city council saying, no, don't transfer f for that reason. However, as the membership changed, uh, what I saw was we really didn't have any finance expertise on that committee other than myself. You know, we had people trying to help and do some budgeting, but I really felt as this committee grew and we got more that this is where the expertise was. In an ideal world, I, I agree with you, but that's not what it was. So that's about all I can say on it. So, so that's why I came back to council and said, you know, maybe now would be the time to put the finance expertise. Thanks to all you members. Okay. Uh, any other any questions or comments? Not until I hear Eric's presentation. Okay. So uh, then I'll turn it over to Eric. He, he's going to present, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Please proceed. 
Uh, thank you, um, Madam Vice Chair, uh, or excuse me, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, members of, of CFAC, um, Eric Caceres with the uh, WERF uh, Program Management Team. I'm um, just going to give a, a quick presentation here. I um, want to talk a little bit about the information that was in uh, in the staff report that you received around uh, a discussion of CFAC's role moving forward um, as it relates to the WERF project, and then just a brief update on, um, on the WERF budget. Uh, and expenditures to date, and, and a little bit about how that process is is morphing and changing um, as we move forward, and how we report out on that. Um, really, two things we want to talk about here tonight. Uh, as I mentioned, um, we want to get receive some input from you uh, regarding your role in the review of the financials for the WORF project. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of things that were discussed in the staff report in terms of the interaction um, between uh, between CFAC and and staff. Uh, and then receive the final uh, the financial update for the WERF project, um, really a summary of information that was presented at the last city council meeting. Um, and we can talk a little bit about some of the things that were brought up previously about um, invoices paid to date versus encumbrances and those kinds of things and how some of the reporting, again, is going to be changing moving forward. Um, as was discussed in the staff report, uh, WERF CAC, or excuse me, CFAC's role uh, in the WERF project, there were two main items that we had identified. Um, first, we saw, or in discussions internally, we talked about a financial providing financial information um, to, to CFAC on a consistent basis. So while not necessarily meeting every month, um, financial information would be provided to CFAC for their review every month. And then on a quarterly basis, the WERF project team um, or a program team would come back and um, present on a quarterly basis the financial information and actually give a, a presentation. Um, the other thing that we have discussed internally is with a long-term multi-year um, program, if you will, like this, um, we look at the budget um, on probably a quarterly basis is what's appropriate and what we've proposed um, to do for this for this program. So, for example, we have an existing uh, $126 million budget overall for the for the WORF project. It's broken down into a number of different components. Um, as we move forward with, say, the design of the uh, one portion of the project. Um, one of the things that we do is we increase the design level, um, which increases our certainty in terms of what the cost estimate is, and we reduce our contingency. So um, costs change as we get more design definition. Um, th these things are coming in uh, every day or every other day that are changing, quote unquote, changing the budget. Uh, um, you know, a consultant contract for um, doing some additional environmental work we might have thought was going to cost thirty-five thousand, and it comes in at twenty-five thousand. Does that mean we're going and updating the budget every single day? Um, no. But what we are proposing to do is really do a quarterly look at the budget. Um, and essentially look at that $126 million, of which um, a, a large component of that is a contingency that we hold, um, and look and see what the changes in the budget do to that contingency amount that we've got that we're planning to erode into um, as, we, as we work through the project, or that's, uh, that's what we're looking at. How is that being affected on a quarterly basis? So again, when we would come back to you on, the quarterly, uh, on a quarterly basis, it would be to discuss, here's what the budget breakdown was previously of the 126 million, and then here's what the budget breakdown looks like now uh, at this point in time, and what we're gonna be carrying forward for the next quarter. Uh, as well as talking about, obviously, the expenditures uh, to date on a monthly basis. Um, to some of the points that were made earlier about the separation of um, the financials from the technical, um, I think a good example is uh, in the last couple of city council meetings, we've been talking about um, the potential changes to the WERF project itself based on the work that we've been doing with the design build team. And so we set out a preliminary schedule that we were going to be providing some technical information to, um, to WERF CAC the second week of March around the project. So we have a, um, a negotiated price for a very uh, specific scope of work with the design build team um, that's going to be constri designing constructing that facility out at South Bay Boulevard. 
Um, we have been working with them over the last several months to identify uh, changes to that project. Those changes have cost impacts either up or down and could impa impact that, um, that, uh, that maximum price that's associated with that contract. Um, our plan was to come to WorfCAC and present the technical merits of some of those changes. So, um, you know, redu redu reducing the size of a, of a certain building, um, that might have a cost cha change associated with it, but we are gonna say, um, you know, we, we think we can reduce the cost, the size of this building because of XYZ technical reason, um, but not really get into the, the cost. Uh, and and as, um, as was mentioned previously, it's hard to make those technical decisions without having some of that financial information. So that's one of the things that we've been kind of struggling with is how exactly you, you split the, the financial from the technical. Um, I think in those instances, it, it's appropriate to bring some of that cost information to WorfCAC, um, you know, the, the cost associated with a, a certain decision, but from a long-term overall financial perspective, that would be the information that would be brought to, to CFAC to review. Um, as I mentioned, I did want to talk a little bit about the changing role and how we were going to be reporting out to um, to the members of the Citizens Advisory Committees and to City Council. Um, we've been working, and this is just an example um, of, of some of the monthly reports that we've been using on other projects and other programs that we've worked on. So this is just an example of one that we've done for, um, for Denver uh, Metropolitan Wastewater District. Um, we are going to be producing on a monthly basis, a, uh, a report that it, that summarizes the key components of the project. Um, mainly, it's going to break down um, the financial and schedule performance, as well as what activities have been completed over the next month and what planned activities are going to be happening over uh, in the in the future month. So there's three things, and it's it's hard to see here, um, but one of the things I wanted to, to, to highlight was there's going to be a high-level dashboard that will be very easy to see at a high level, um, the health of the various components of the project, um, be it budget, schedule, um, uh, public complaints, any of these kinds of things we're working into and developing the, the, the framework for this report right now. Um, there'll be uh, budget information as, as is shown here um, with a number of different graphs and tables that will show how we're performing to the $126 million budget. Um, that was the basis of the rates. And then we'll also have a, a breakdown of the schedule and how the schedule is, uh, how we're performing in terms of, of schedule. Um, now, what we've, what we've discussed is this, pr this report is likely going to be probably more uh, information, more detail than, than you're going to want to review. So while we're producing this report, we're going to be extracting some of the key financial information, and that's what we'll be providing to, C to CFAC to review. So that's really what we're looking at is kind of the financial piece of this is what is what you will see uh, on a on a monthly basis and then on a quarterly basis you this information will be presented to you in a little bit more detail with an actual presentation an actual meeting. Um, Are there data besides just financial? I mean, obviously you need some kind of earned value assessment of what progress has been made as opposed to here's how much money we spent. So. Microsoft Project, which you say you use, certainly can do that if you loaded it the right way. We will be um, producing financial information and looking at things like earned value, and that would be something that that would be brought to um, both the council and and CFAC. So I should I should um, I should state that the information that we're talking about that will go to council is also going to be available to the public. Obviously, will go on to the city's website, and so that report will be available to everyone. Um, what we would propose to do is to extract the critical financial information that you all would be interested in and, and have that as a kind of a separate, a separate um, smaller report. Um, just a quick schedule for the month, and again, these are, um, these are things that, we're, that are in progress now. Um, we're getting a little bit more diligent in terms of um, the invoice cutoff dates for, for the month, meaning um, the information that I'm going to present here tonight on the WORF budget uh, and some of the information or some of the comments that were made previously um, by Mr. Alexander, um, we deal more with encumbrances, and that's really what, um, as a, from a program standpoint, or from a project management standpoint, that's what we care about. Um, invoices are finalized. Uh, that can take some time for whatever reason. Um, 
but really what we care about is once that invoice comes in and is approved um, from a technical standpoint, that money is now being taken from the project. And so that's what we're going to be um, reporting. So the information that's been reported previously for the WERF is going to change a little bit in that, um, and this is something that was discussed at the last council meeting, the information on the OpenGov site, which actually shows the checks that have been paid to individual consultants or for individual items, is not get necessarily going to reflect what's going to be in these reports. These reports are going to reflect, as of a certain date at the beginning of the month, here are the invoices that have been received and approved, and here's what the actual encumbrances are versus what the checks that have been written. So that'll happen the first week of the month. We have to cut, have that cutoff date, get everything into the system um, so I can get the financial information updated. The, we'll, the second week of the month, we'll really be working on developing that status report, um, the financial, the schedule, and, uh, and the, the actual what's been completed to date and what's going to be completed. Um, that financial information would be provided to um, CFAC around the third week of the month prior to um, prior to the scheduled meeting. Um, and at that same time, it would be getting ready and would be going out essentially into the staff report for council. And then we're making a monthly staff report to council starting next month uh, at the, the, second, the second meeting, council meeting of the month. So during that fourth week of the month. So this is essentially the, the schedule that we've come up with for um, development of that status report and how that will be reported out to um, CFAC, uh, council, and to the public. Um, any questions on that aspect before we get into the budget update? I can do the, the budget updates relative, uh, is relatively short. I can go through that quickly and then we can talk and get questions. No, it that. sounds like after we see some of these metrics and the earned value and completion and uh, all that, that you'll have some flexibility as to how, you know, we can, if we have s anything we'd like to recommend, you're flexible, correct? Yes. Um, so one of the things that our team is currently working on is um, we've had some discussions internally um, about the, the, com the format for this report and what will be included, um, schedule metrics, financial metrics, and other, uh, and other technical information. Um, we've had a couple of meetings. We've got all of that together. Um, we're going to have a draft report format that we'll be sharing with, um, with, with council here in the, uh, in the upcoming, in the next, in next few weeks. Um, so that would be something that we could also bring to CFAC to review uh, in terms of specifically the, the financial information to see if that is complete for what you guys are looking for. Go ahead, please. Great. So from a budget update, I thought I would throw this in here because it was something that we talked about at council um, last meeting, but I thought it was important to note. Um, had a lot of discussion here about the Blue Ribbon Commission, brings back some good memories of, of uh, June of this year um, and development of the rates. And one of the things that we've been talking about is the impacts of funding on, um, on the rates and the impacts of funding on the availability of doing additional capital projects. So one of the things that we just recently learned was um, that our SRF uh, application was finalized and we actually received very good scoring. So a recycled water project like ours um, can receive a maximum point for, of 14 points out of 17 and we received 14 points, which is, which is as good as we can do. Um, and we're doing everything we can to um, push that application forward. We'll have final confirmation at the beginning of April whether the city is going to be on the funded list or not on the funded list. So we've got our fingers crossed there. Um, that we will be on the funding list. We've done everything we can from a technical standpoint at this point. Our application um, was, was well received. Um, I wanted to just give a quick update on the, the overall $126 million budget for folks that are new to, to CFAC that, that may not have been uh, um, following the project as uh, closely as you may be now um, back in the May-June time period. So when um, Carollo was brought on board, one of the first things that we did was look at the project budget. Um, just a little bit of history, the project budget was initially $167 million um, based on a, a public, uh, public works peer review um, committee that was, select, that was put together um, with a, a number of public works professionals from the county looking at the project. The project budget went from $167 million to $150 million. Um, I won't go into the details of where some of those changes came from, but we had the luxury once uh, we came on board as a new program manager of having the actual 
um, proposals from the design build teams available. And we also did a pretty deep dive on the soft cost or the non-construction cost related items that made up the, the project budget. And so we went from $150 million project to $126 million project. And you can see the breakdown here. Um, these uh, the, the blue bars in the middle represent the three main construction projects that comprise the overall WERF project. So on the, 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 the left, the tallest bar, that's the actual facility at South Bay Boulevard. The budget for that component of the overall $126 million um, is made up of, of really three things. It's the construction cost. It's um, project specific soft costs. So um, one example would be construction management for that component of the project. And then you've got the top bar, the dark blue, which is reserves. Um, and so you can see there's three projects, the WERF, the conveyance facilities, and the recycle water offsite facilities. And you can see the breakdown of those. We also have some general, um, over here on the far left is the general program management costs. Um, things like what we just talked about, program controls, monthly reporting, those kinds of things for the duration of the project. And then on the far right was about $5 million that was spent between the years 2013 and 2018 before we came on board in, uh, in April of last year. So that's the breakdown. Um, in terms of the expenditures, this is as of the end of, of January um, of this year. Um, the current spent to date is about 5.8 million uh, against the total budget of 126 million. Um, we've been working internally with staff to try to figure out um, some of the budgets for the previous years aren't as clear. So when you look at budgeted versus actual spent actual, things don't line up um, that well and we're working to kind of rectify that and, and figure that out going forward. Um, so again, um, looking for input tonight on, on your role in the, in the financial review for the WERF project uh, and then any questions you may have on the budgetary information that was presented. Thank you, Eric. And this presentation was the same one you did at council last week, correct? Um, or you very, revised it a little bit? Very similar. Yeah. Um, the, the budget information is essentially the same. Um, I worked with the finance director, Ms. Calloway, and there was a, a discrepancy of a couple thousand dollars between some of the numbers that we were using, so we fixed that, and then um, also added a couple of slides in there around the, the monthly report and put a little bit more detail into that. Okay, great. All right, I'll open it up for questions, comments. Uh, Lois, did you have anything? Okay, thank you. Bill. Well, I assume we need to decide among the committee how we want to tackle it. I mean, one approach would be to get a subcommittee of the CFAC uh, identified to go work uh, with Eric and with uh, Rob and get the data and the knowledge that we need the contracts and understand the terms and conditions and uh, understand mm -hmm. the whole program plan, where they are, where they are with Microsoft Project Management. Do we have access to Microsoft Project Management? I mean, on and on, all the things you do to mm -hmm. monitor a program. Uh, so we, we should probably decide tonight, uh, I think we have to, are we going to have a subcommittee uh, of the CFAC do this? And then my recommendation is that subcommittee should work very closely with the uh, the RF, uh, mm -hmm. just so that when information is brought to this committee, mm -hmm. we'll be more able to go ahead and uh, provide a, a good input. Okay, yes, and a couple of us have thought of that. So uh, let's go through if there's any questions of Eric, and then we'll ha have our discussion. Uh, thanks, but that's excellent. Uh, John, David, Dave? I don't have any questions at this point. A couple. Um, when do you anticipate starting the monthly reports? Um, anticipate that those would start in March. Um, like I said, we have about in the next week or so, we should have a good draft of the monthly report in terms of the format of it. Um, so I would hope by the, the March meeting of this year, um, the second council meeting of the year, we would be able to, um, to have that new report format. So for our next meeting, you anticipate we might see the first you set see, of reports? You would see a draft report, yeah. Draft report. Um, how much detail will be there? I mean, for instance, will it show how much the, um, the budget is for, um, as an example, um, the hydrogeologist and how much the monthly expenses are against that 
budget or how much the encumbrances are against that budget at that line item level? Um, yeah, that was one of the things that was that was discussed and and um, at the at the high at a high level in the beginning pages of the report we would have a more of summary of information, but that is something specifically that's been asked for that would be provided in terms of every commitment that's outstanding for the wharf right now, which I'd say there's probably, um, from a professional services standpoint, there's probably, I don't know, we'll call it uh, 10 contracts that are out there that are being managed. We'll have the um, budgeted amount, we'll have the invoice to date, and we'll have the current month invoice so you can see um, if, if the hydrogeologist has a budget of $300,000 and they had a $50,000 invoice that came in that previous month, there'll be a description of you'll be able to see that one and there'll be a description of the activities that were performed um, that, that tie to that uh, that invoice. And all 10 of those guys have been told to submit their invoices promptly, right? Um, yes, we've told them, okay. we've told them <laughs> that. Oh, go ahead, John. So Eric, what is the, the flow of processing those invoices? I mean, is there any any way that those invoices can not get to you in a timely manner to provide the information? Um, I'm the first person that the invoices come to, so there's a, a essentially a, what I'll call a three and a half step process. Um, so the invoices first come to me for um, review and approval. Um, that review and approval for me is essentially looking and making sure from, from, a, from a high level, um, does the invoiced, current invoiced amount, does it exceed the contract limits? Uh, and then making sure that the invoice is complete in terms of, again, we asked for, so that we can build our monthly reports, um, we asked for a summary of the activities that have been performed um, that go along with that invoice. So those are the things that I'm looking at, and then that invoice um, goes to Mr. Livick um, to review, uh, and he does uh, his, oh no, excuse me, it goes to Ms. Martin for her review, and she reviews it, looks at contract terms, uh, making sure that everything is good from a contracting standpoint, and then it goes on to Mr. Livick, who does the final review, uh, and then it's, it's, um, it's changed a little bit in terms of what he has to do in terms of printing and signing, um, but that's kind of the three steps that it goes through. And, and another quick comment I'll make on uh, when I was on WARFCAC to Bill's point. Uh, the, we didn't think on WARFCAC what we were getting was sufficient in terms of we were just getting PO listings, but it didn't have a lot of real beefy accounting information. Now, that's, that's because the project was just starting off and there was a lot of POs, so it made sense. But what uh, we did or uh, I, I came back to CFAC and they came up with a, a spreadsheet format that would include encumbrances and other things. Again, not the detail we're going to get here, but it was a step in the process. So there's been an interaction with CFAC and that's what uh, WERFCAC was reporting on a quarterly basis so that we could year to date, project to date, et cetera, quarter to date. So, so I think now it's going to get refined more at a more detailed level and have more metrics and, and I think think you'll, you'll, we'll be happy with it, and it sounds like Eric is flexible. I'd like to ask Mr. Collins a question. Um, over the last year, there's been a lot of public comment about an owner's agent and somebody controlling the checkbook. Um, do you feel that um, between Mr. Caceres and the reporting that he's planning that that will be satisfied? I do. Um, as I mentioned in response to that question, council a couple of meetings ago, um, ultimately the, the responsibility lies with me as the city manager. Um, I've, I've hired an exceptional program manager. We have a, a very good team uh, around him and subcontractors that are committed to getting the best value they can out of this project. Um, I believe the financial reports will be more than sufficient to penetrate any weaknesses in any areas of concern. Uh, we have two advisory committees that are also reviewing this project, plus uh, the overall citizen owners, the representatives of the city council. So I, I think there's a significant number of layers that ensure that we get the best value. We get a project that benefits our community for a long time. Uh, and the financial reports that are coming forward, I'm really happy with what Eric has provided. Thanks for asking that question. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, so let's discuss, uh, several of us have been thinking along this line. We haven't had an opportunity to discuss it in, uh, uh, in terms of a subcommittee to maybe uh, drill down a little bit more what we need. I, I always like to start at a high level and go down rather than jumping into the weeds. And we want to make sure we do this in a logical, uh, good, fiscally responsible. So what are the other members' uh, thoughts on doing a subcommittee for the WRF oversight? Anybody want to jump in? You think it, what I'm asking is you think. Well, the biggest thing, new to this whole process mm -hmm. and the Brown Committee makes it seem impossible to have the whole committee be doing much collaboration mm -hmm. and discussion and having a subcommittee makes it easier to mm -hmm. figure out what's really going on and, and work with the city and, and Scott and Eric to, to understand the information and then bring it back to the committee. I think that initially it makes sense to have a subcommittee mm -hmm. and um, since we haven't even looked at any of the reports and stuff and in two or three months we could say you know it's it's fine or maybe not I don't know, you know? And, and that's exactly what I would think I, I don't want to institute something that'll be another committee and, and more meetings and 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 you're right but we are I believe I've always said this handicapped somewhat by the Brown like all these questions today that were excellent that came came in over the last week and in terms of a holiday weekend and getting response and how hard staff had to work and some of us that may have had other commitments today or working or whatever barely have a chance other than at lunch to read the response and it's an education process so but the regulations are what they are so having said that I would certainly support uh, having a subcommittee and um, I will ask for any and, and initially a short term I'm looking at 90 to 120 days and come back and in the in between that time give us some recommendations so that we can make this a smooth uh, process Scott yeah Subcommittee could, could be very valuable in, in that regard. Um, one thing to note is that council direction was pretty general, but it's forward looking, um, not backwards looking, where mm -hmm. this project is moving forward. Um, so it's really reviewing financial reports as they come in. So we want to make sure that's very clear. Um, I, and I think uh, if there are changes based upon recommendations from the subcommittee and ultimately CFAC, those would need to come back to the full council for review. In case it's a di adding a lot of scope to the to the overall oversight role. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that clarification. I agree with you. Looking forward, what's done is done. Backward, we've spent 5.8 million, and we've had a lot of discussion over the years and different sites, and there's a lot of reasons, and we don't need to rehash all that. So I would agree with that. Um, any anybody like to volunteer to be on the subcommittee? Let's start with that. Well, besides Bill and John. You know what? Actually, I'm going to volunteer, not because I have a lot of extra time, but because I have uh, some uh, background uh, in managing large capital projects. So uh, I feel I feel like it's something I should do. Well, that would be wonderful. And again, we're, we're going to try to limit the scope, the time, so that we can... Um, yeah, I certainly would like to get involved with that. And certainly that's been my background is managing very large programs. Nothing in the size of this, usually much larger, but uh, pieces, every large project has many smaller pieces and this is a very big piece for the city and I'd be very much interested. Okay, we would welcome your participation. Let's see who else is interested because we will be, we'll have to limit it to three, correct? Dave, Homer? <laughs> no, you don't I was going to volunteer anybody. Homer. You don't pick anybody else. You just... <laughs> no, I don't want to crowd, you know, get in the way if the two of you want to do it. John? John's busy with his vice chair duties, and I'm busy, busy with my chair duties in the other committee. Dave, are you interested? I don't want to put anybody on the spot. I want people that really want to do it and... I'd be interested in, in helping. I'll, I'll spend the time doing it. I'm not sure what skill set I'd bring to the subcommittee if there are other people that have. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'd like to see what we're, what what data we're going to be looking at. We don't have a we don't we haven't seen this report yet, and I'd also like to have a clear understanding of what we're supposed to produce, what information does the council want from us? 
are we just going to review and comment or is is that the extent of it are we supposed to do a create a, a report a detailed analysis of the information periodically I think some of that's going to evolve what are we, gonna, over what, time. What are we, what are we, what are we, what's the product that we're going to, we're, we, we're offering here? What? Yeah, that's one of the tasks of this subcommittee is for you. What is the product we produce? Do we just review what we receive uh, from Eric on a monthly basis, or do we end up uh, coming up with our own additional comments or report? And then be able to bring it back to the full committee and have the full committee say, you guys did great work, or go back to the drawing board. It's a tough one because I know on the WERF CAC it did evolve and they brought reports to us and some of us said, no, that's not going to get us there. And rather than you keep bringing back reports and we say, no, that's not what we want, we came back and said, this is what we want. And as a minimum, give us the revenue, the encumbrances, and some things like that. Not, not perfect, but we kind of know if we're going to provide financial oversight, and you guys have, some of us have experience with big projects, we kind of know what we think we should see, and maybe he comes and brings us the first thing, and then we start hashing it out. Yeah. But I think Ms. McPherson has given us some direction and financial oversight, yes. I'm watching the time. Go ahead. Do you have a comment? No, I just remind you that we have 11 minutes. Chair, Chairman, um, maybe just look at the first report and then go from there before creating a subcommittee. Maybe spin it off something you don't need. I mean, maybe it's sufficient. Maybe it isn't, and you you know you can go from there. And I Next. agree with that. I think we uh, I think we should look at we should look at the information that we need to evaluate first, and then come up with a clear objective of what we're supposed to produce right before we jump into before we jump into having a, sub, a subcommittee so I'm gonna I'm gonna withhold volunteering until we do that that means that Eric has to have the report finished by our next meeting right or draft or draft or, draft, draft. or even or draft. a yeah draft be, rough draft you okay with that Eric but well, one of the things for certainly yep. someone like me that's coming in late to the party uh, on WRF one of the first things is to find out okay what other cities have done similar things I'm talking to Eric the background his company has let's go dialogue with others the problems that they've had what's worked what has not worked understand what the risks are mm -hmm. I mean any program that I've ever run in the past you really need to understand the program technology and what the risks are and you want to get lessons learned from other people ideally the best programs are ones that are repeats of what's been done before has someone done exactly the same thing as we've done or very close to it and we'd like to I'm sure every the people that are involved with WRF must know all that but I'm totally new to that mm -hmm. and to do an effective job at monitoring and, and assessing the reports that we're going to receive it would be very helpful to get that kind of background and edu that education um, before we adjourn, I just have one question for Mrs. Calloway. Ms. Calloway, um, would it be possible to schedule a workshop training session for OpenGov for those folks that are having trouble with it? We, we've intended to get one scheduled for the community. We can schedule a. We can work on finding a date to schedule one for the committee. It would be have to be an. Um, agendized, you know, noticed meeting if the full committee were to attend. We can't have more than how many? Four. How many of us would like to have a training session? Uh, OpenGov is our online transparency portal where you can access our uh, transactions online and see where what vendors we've paid. You'll probably be able to figure it out really easily. I just <laughs> keep struggling with it. I had to play around with it, but yeah, I figured it out. But I would certainly come, you know, otherwise I'll just keep muddling around. Okay. We'll work on finding a date and, and have a out. workshop or something? Yes. Because there may be some other people that are interested. We've been asked to do that. It's been on our list of things okay. to do. 
Okay, so we will, uh, before we adjourn items B5 and B7, just carry those forward to the next, that was the investment report, or we can send you comments, It's that's only a page. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll carry forward B5, that has to come to the committee before council, I think that's in our, okay. in your bylaws, so we'll carry that forward. Okay, so is there anything else before we uh, adjourn? And you're welcome to do some advanced research on any of that because I think you will be selected or appointed. <laughs> okay, so, okay, we'll adjourn. Thank you all. Wait, 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 wait. wait oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, next, next month. Oh. Uh, items for next month. Um, could we put the CAFR on next month's agenda? Just because we didn't really see the whole thing and we have some new members. Uh, but just a very brief, you don't have to go through the whole thing or anything, just... Uh, something where people can ask questions about it because they have never seen it before. Um, we can do that. I, we'll put it on there and hopefully get to it. I think you're going to find our agendas are going to be pretty full like this going forward between a monthly wharf report and we'll have to start budget conversation next week So, but or next month. But we'll put it on there and hopefully get to it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? For, no? Okay. All right. Meeting adjourned 553. Thank you. <laughs>